Hi, Ken Goodman here with a little egg on my face. The very first video I posted was a teardown of a Philips LED light bulb where I found that um, solder joints failed that were connecting uh, wire leads to a ceramic circuit board. And I uh, speculated at one point that maybe the uh, ceramic board got hot enough to reflow and then re-solidify the solder making it bomb up and separate from the pad. Someone posted an excellent comment to that video doubting whether the boards could have gotten hot enough to uh, begin to reflow that solder. They were right and I was totally wrong. So, after reading that comment, I decided to attach some kind of temperature sensor to the board inside that bulb and run the bulb for a while under a couple of different conditions and see how hot it actually got. That's right, don't guess, measure. So I found a nice little uh, miniature RTD that I thought would do the job tried clamping it between the plastic reflector and the heat sink and that didn't work out well because the heat sink had become quite brittle and it kept cracking everywhere I tried to flex it a little bit. So I ended up clamping the uh, RTD to one of the ceramic boards carrying uh, LEDs uh, using a little piece of fiberglass board as you can see in the picture here. So I ran the bulb for a while in two different configurations. First with the bulb exposed to the air, just upright in a, a socket on my desk. And then inside a glass globe in a fixture hanging from part of my desk, which would be more like uh, inside a fixture attached to a ceiling. And then I uh, projected the resulting temperature measurements into a third scenario where the uh, bulb might have been inside the fixture. It was actually in when it failed, which is under the eaves on my house. Let's take a look at those temperatures. You can see that indeed the uh, board temperature never got anywhere near hot enough to uh, start to melt or start to reflow um, typical uh, solder used in electronics. I'm being a little charitable toward my theory here using SN62, which has a fairly low melting point. Uh, it's much more likely that there was some lead-free alloy used in these bulbs with an even higher melting point and even higher process temperatures. So why did I post that ridiculous theory? After thinking about it a while, I realized I was just reluctant to admit that Philips actually <laughs> uh, shipped bulbs with cold solder joints, which is uh, what we're probably looking at in the original failure analysis. Just cold solder joints that uh, uh, had a very poor connection to begin with and failed over time. Again, um, temperature cycling probably played a part in that separation and, and ultimate failure, but um, had nothing to do with uh, reflowing solder on those pads. So let me just wrap this up by saying that uh, the next time I say something dumb in one of these videos, I hope someone will point it out to me in the comments. Good day.